Hey guys, welcome back to the Handy Tech channel. I'm working on my go-kart again. In part one of this video series, I bought a second-hand go-kart, stripped it down, and I showed you the installation of a 48 volt, one kilowatt motor and controller. We discussed how I installed and wired everything, and I went over my battery pack in some detail. After a pretty disappointing trial run for the video, I've replaced the broken chain and I've taken it for some further tests. Make sure you check out part one if you haven't already. So here's the results of my tests. Sorry about the wind noise. This is probably around the top speed. I'd say it's about 45 kilometers an hour. So then we took it to a car park just down the road. Here I was able to do some further tests. I did try to do some skids but I think the inrush current limit on the controller wouldn't allow the required current to be drawn in order to spin the tyres. It sort of has a bit of a soft start. I could get it a little bit loose at the back but it had more to do with momentum than the power of the motor spinning the tyres. I was also trying to monitor the setup while driving. The motor did heat up a little bit, but was only warm to the touch. For range, with mixed driving I'd say I could achieve around 25 minutes before the batteries fall too far below the threshold limit. The peak current I drew was about 55 amps. I was pretty pleased with the results and I did prove my concept. But to be honest though, I wasn't satisfied and I wanted to go bigger. I started stripping the go-kart down and I removed most of the components I had installed. I'll definitely keep these parts for a future project. And the price, which was less than $200 for the motor and controller, is pretty good bang for buck. I really wanted to start with a fresh slate again, so I've removed everything except the dash panel. Let's have a look at the new bigger and better setup. This is the Alltrax SPM 48300 controller. It's packed with loads of great features and it's capable of 300 amps. We have a Motenergy ME0708 brush DC motor. This sucker is much beefier and is many times more powerful than the last motor. We're going to use the same battery pack as last time and there's a number of other ancillary components that we'll discuss as we go. So let's quickly discuss the wiring diagram. The positive feed from the battery is connected via a high current solenoid to B plus of the SPM controller. The negative is connected to B minus. The B plus and M minus of the controller connect directly to the motor. You'll have to know which way the motor spins in order to get the polarity right. Brush DC motors are the easiest, you can simply swap the connection points. The solenoid is activated by the controller with these two connections. A feed from the battery positive is connected to one side of the key switch via a 5 amp fuse. The other side of the key switch connects to a foot switch on the accelerator. When the key is on and you accelerate, the foot switch connects the feed to the connection point here. And finally, throttle position is connected to these two points. Oh, and one more thing, this pre-charge resistor is connected across the solenoid. I'm pretty sure it's there to limit initial high inrush current. So let's put it all together. This is the sprocket hub sitting next to the sprocket that I wanted to use for the go-kart. However, as you can see, it just doesn't fit. I had to take this to a boiler maker and he welded a big piece of aluminium onto it like this. After that, I took it to a machinist who faced and resized the aluminium to suit the new sprocket. I wish I had the tools that I could do this sort of stuff myself, but hey, maybe in the future. So now I can bolt the sprocket onto the hub and it will be concentric and strong. I had to file the keyway slot and I did a little bit of filing and sanding to get the sprocket to fit the axle. I'm confident that this setup is really strong and will handle anything the motor can throw at it. Now I needed to mount the motor. The motor being second hand already had this bracket that was made from a very thick and strong plastic. My idea was just to mount this directly to the old engine mount. 
so I basically had to adjust the base of the motor bracket so it could fit next to the seat, reassemble it, then use a clamp to fix it to the engine mount. I'm doing my best to line up the motor sprocket and axle sprocket here. Now when I lift the motor up, the engine mount comes away with it, clamped in place. Back on the workbench, I can now use a pencil to mark onto the plastic some appropriate mounting holes to fix it to the engine bracket. With the mounting locations marked, now we can disassemble the plastic brackets, centre punch and drill out the holes. Make sure you use either spring washers or nylocks so the bolts won't come loose. Looks pretty straight, we can do some adjustment later when the chain is on. Next up we need to mount the Alltrax controller. This is a good spot for it and it has good clearance for the steering arm assembly. It comes with these mounting feet that clip in like this and I just tech screwed them straight to the skid plate. Now I have to adjust the 520 pitch chain. I got this one second hand from a motorcycle wreckers along with the sprocket for $50. I asked the guy there how strong the chain was and he said it could lift a small car, so I think we're good. The chain has a master link that you gotta undo to shorten the chain. I had a bit of trouble with this because I don't have a chain breaker, but I got there in the end. With the chain now shortened to the right length, we can loosen the motor mount and shift it along the frame to tension the chain up. and now I'm able to align both sprockets for minimal resistance. Moving on to the throttle, this cable throttle has a spring mechanism that moves the wiper of a 5k ohm potentiometer. I'm going to mount it near the accelerator pedal on the cart. You'll be able to see here how the foot switch operates. I'm using some nylon cord here with a automotive crimp crimped onto the end of one end. The other end is fixed to that throttle wiper. I salvaged some cable from a scrap copper bin. This stuff is extremely rigid and is more than capable of carrying huge current with minimal voltage drop. Once I've bent the cable into shape, I have some lugs that I can terminate it with. The only way for me to do this was to use two soldering irons heating the cable up and filling it with solder, then placing a lug on, heating that up and mounting more solder into it. This isn't the best way to do it, a crimper would be the best, but it's just the only way that was available to me. With the motor and controller taking up a lot more space, we needed to make a shelf for the batteries. We used the cardboard template, cut it out of a galve sheet using an angle grinder, then bent and drilled the tabs. Here's how it mounts up. We also made up some little L brackets that can hold the batteries in place. I used a multimeter to confirm the foot switch connections, then it was just a matter of connecting it to the key switch and taking a feed from the battery supply via a 5 amp fuse. That's basically all there was to it. It's time for the first test. Now there are heaps of settings you can change on the program that I'll have to cover in an upcoming video, but essentially we started out very slow with a max current of only 30 amps. This was extremely slow, but I just wanted to make sure everything was aligned well and working okay before upping the power. While this was very slow in terms of acceleration, the go-kart felt awesome. So then after the second run at 60 amps, we thought we'd stop, 
bleed the brakes so that the cart was a bit safer. Then we upped the power to 120 amps. This motor is rated for 300 amps peak, so we're not really approaching the limit yet. With this current setting, we're at about 40%. I'd say this is already much better than the first setup I tried, and the top speed is about 10 kilometers per hour faster as well. There is no doubt that this cart has more to give, however we are starting to approach the limits of the plastic brackets. When we tried testing at 200 amps, the motor put out so much torque that the plastic bracketry twisted and the chain came off. That's all for now until the next episode. I already have some plans in mind for improvement. Show me some support by hitting that subscribe button or give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you again soon.